Welcome to My Pods Podcast. I'm Dr. Joe Schneider, and after 35 years as a functional neurologist, a personal journey through stroke recovery and helping thousands of patients, I'm here to share breakthrough solutions for POTS and neurological wellness. From getting out of bed in the morning to rebuilding your nervous system, this is your guide to understanding and overcoming neurological challenges. Let's begin this journey to recovery together. Our chance to really kind of uh, teach uh, our patients with POTS about what goes on in the autonomic nervous system for each patient. Uh, so today, I really, I, I got a patient yesterday whose primary problem is breathing. So you, you uh, always think breathing is uh, can be involuntary. It just happens because your body needs oxygen and then you breathe freely. But you also have uh, the availability that um, you can voluntarily breathe or you can just go at a r- any rate that you want. And that comes from your frontal cortex. Your breathing mechanism comes from primarily the medulla oblongata. That's the portion of your midbrain that's right at the bottom before you start the spine. And they look at oxygen, you also look at carbon dioxide from sensors centrally and peripherally, and they look at your pH of your blood. So when you're breathing involuntarily, you're looking to the medulla oblongata to be doing its job. That's has to be regulating your carbon dioxide, your oxygen, and your pH. So the breathing mechanism is from your diaphragm. And your diaphragm is a big muscle that's kind of under your ribs. And when you breathe in, the diaphragm drops into your abdomen. And when you breathe out, the diaphragm comes up. It's like a bellows. So when it goes up, it forces air out. And when it goes down, it forces air in. Okay? So the primary exchange is usually oxygen. You're bringing oxygen in. And then you're exhaling carbon dioxide. Although there are carbon, carbon dioxide does stay in your, your bloodstream and it has certain um, like uh, bicarbonate and things like that ions that, that help regulate your pH. So, but the mechanism is diaphragmatic breathing. The other mechanism, when the diaphragm is not getting enough breath into the lung to satisfy its need, your ribs start to come in out. So it's trying to force the lungs itself to have bigger volume so you can get more breath in. So a lot of our patients, when they come in and we go through the breathing mechanism, they have insufficient diaphragmatic breath. They actually can't voluntarily expand their diaphragmatic breath. And they can't control its rate. So if you think about a patient with POTS who is not breathing properly physically, then what's going to happen is those mechanisms will atrophy. Now the neurological areas that feed the diaphragm is called the phrenic nerve. It's from the second, third, and fourth vertebra in the upper part of the neck. That phrenic nerve travels down through the thorax, through your lung area, past your heart, and it it innervates the diaphragm. So you have one phrenic nerve per side. And those nerves are controlled in the medulla oblongata for you to have proper mechanical aspects of breath so that you can bring in the oxygen and exhale the carbon dioxide. So when we get a patient that is having problems with their diaphragm, and they're having problems with their ribs, a lot of times they're going to have, if they're primarily chest breathing all the time, which is a shallow breath, they're going to have tender and sore ribs all the way up here up top. So uh, the second, third, fourth, and fifth ribs become sore. Usually they're sore on one side versus the other, and so those areas need to be adjusted or manipulated so that they have better movement. And so, and then we have to teach them 
how to breathe through the diaphragm. <laughs> so it sounds like an easy mechanism, but uh, things that are simple, things that are easy, sometimes we overlook it. Now, if you think that the um, your breath is off, a lot of people in yoga, and I, I don't want to put people in yoga down, but they, they, they try to breathe or expand their chest too much. Now, the lower part of the chest expands, but the upper part should not expand through a normal, relaxed breath. When you put like exercise demands on your body, then what will happen is you breathe at a higher frequency and you also breathe deeply through the diaphragm then into the ribs. So that's a normal physiological state. What we're finding is people with POTS or dysautonomia aren't breathing right. Their mechanisms for breathing are proper and their rate of breathing is sometimes higher. So then we have to get them into a state where they're breathing properly. Now, why is breath so important? Well, you have your pulmonary cardiac system. Your heart pumps blood from the body, then through the lungs back to the heart, and then out to the rest of your body. So part of the heart's job is to pump oxygenated blood through your body, okay? So, but if your mechanisms are not working properly to do that, then you're going to have postural or the static tachycardia syndrome or dysautonomy. That's why it's so important for you to breathe properly. There are different types of instruments that work really well for breath. One is by heart math. H-E-A-R-T-M-A-T-H dot com. If you go to heartmath.com, you can measure your pulse on your earlobe, and then you're going to breathe through your heart and engage the diaphragm fully. And when you train with heart math, then what will happen is, is that you'll have a better respiratory rate and a better involuntary breathing situation which will relax you which will help your heart rate to uh, actually be more finely tuned and it'll be healthier for you over time the other thing that happens is that when you're doing aerobic activity and it's a what we call the mathetone method mathetone method is that you when you exercise you're doing 180 minus your age and if you're really sick, minus 10, that is your maximum heart rate. And if, when you get up to your maximum heart rate and you stay there, then you're training your body to train your system aerobically, which is mean that you're training it with oxygen. And when you do that, that whole system of the heart pumping blood in through your lung and out into your body uh, becomes more fine-tuned. And when you fine tune your controls, then you'll feel better. You'll have less fatigue, you'll sleep better, you have less anxiety, less stress, less digestive or nausea. Issues like that will start to clear up and you'll overall feel much better. So this is your uh, mypotspodcast.com. And uh, we're, we're just so, so glad we have this forum so that you can learn more about how your body should function and how to get there. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on My Pots Podcast. If you're looking for more support, visit us at hopebraincenter.com or follow our journey on TikTok where we share daily insights and inspiration. Remember, healing is possible. I'm living proof. I'm Dr. Joseph Schneider. And I'll see you next time as we continue exploring paths to recovery.